Jens, thanks very much for your time and thanks for a really interesting report on the Middle East. Um, Ziad, if we could maybe start with you and maybe just comment on the impact of heightened tensions and what that might look like in terms of the impact on global GDP via your scenario analysis and the methodology you uh, uh, employ to get those outcomes. Sure. So our base case is that the conflict will remain confined as we have seen in the last few months. This has, this has had limited impact on global growth, no effect on so whatsoever on all supplies, and limited impact on global inflation. And our base case is that this will probably continue. There are risk scenarios, however. There is a risk scenario in which you have a direct Iran and Israel war that could send the global economy into recession. There is the bad but less devastating scenario in which you had a proxy war between Iran and Israel via Lebanon and Syria. That will not cause a recession, but will still cause um, the global economy to lose about $300 million in lost output. And of course, there is a scenario of a ceasefire, which may not benefit the global economy much in terms of economics, but at least it will save, it will reduce the human toll that we've had over the last few months from this conflict. And, and Sally, if we move to you and we keep Ziad's scenario analysis in mind, um, what does that look like in terms of the oil market overall? OPEC next meet, meets on the 1st of June. Um, will they think any differently? How do we think about oil's fair value? Sure. So, I mean, when we look at the oil prices, uh, what we see is that oil prices have actually found a lot of support this year, not only because of the geopolitical developments, but also because demand has been better and healthier than initially expected. And also because despite all these ten tensions, as, and as uh, Ziad described, we haven't actually had any disruption to oil uh, supply. So un unless there is an escalation to the proxy or the direct war scenarios that Ziad mentioned, um, and unless there is meaningful uh, disruption to oil supply, we expect the impact of geopolitics on oil prices to remain limited in a confined war scenario, which is our prevailing scenario. So with, about the oil fair value, I mean, our model currently um, is, is signaling an oil fair value of just below $90 a barrel, which is where prices have been hovering. And unless there's a significant shift in the drivers that we use in our model, which include refining margins, inventories, inflation expectations, and geopolitical risk, it's unlikely that the fair value for oil will change significantly. And when it comes to OPEC, I mean, they, unless they, they meet on uh, June 1st, and unless they see uh, significant improvement in, in demand, and unless there is an escalation in war and there is a disruption, a significant disruption to oil supply, it's very much possible that the group extends its cuts into the third quarter. That's great. And thanks, Will, maybe to you for the last word here. Um, we've heard about the worst case on global GDP. Um, we've heard that OPEC is likely to stay the course. How did BI analyze the impact on businesses? So we've taken a look at all of our sectors under coverage and energy, shipping, and, and U.S. defense are the ones that are most impacted by uh, the events going on uh, between Israel and Hamas. Quite, quite clearly, right now, we haven't seen limited impact to oil prices or or, or trade flows throughout through the Middle East. But in our more extreme direct war scenario, we envisage a possibility of a closure of the Strait of Hormuz, which would significantly disrupt uh, the global oil markets, uh, as the Persian Gulf is home to roughly 20% of global oil supply. And this includes uh, major uh, production facilities from a lot of the Western uh, energy integrateds. While on shipping, uh, we've also seen an impact already uh, given that the closure of the of the Bab al Mandal al Mandab Strait uh, has has forced a rerouting of of many uh, major shipping uh, companies around South Africa around the the Cape of Good Hope, and this has increased freight rates and increased diesel prices into Europe. And finally, on U.S. defense, we see some limited upside for uh, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing for some of the uh, for some of the munitions supply and. Uh, and, and, and military uh, weapon systems that, that they're selling into, into Israel. Gentlemen, fascinating report with loads of shelf life. Thanks very much for your time.